you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That thing is, uh, this is a crystal clear thing. Sweet. Well, the time has come. It is the last Chasing Hardware episodes, the last segment of Chasing Hardware, we should say, for 2022. And that is because we are headed southbound again. Seems like that's all we've been doing this year is heading south to the Hobie BOS Tournament of Champions down in Louisiana on Cattle Lake. We're getting up bright and early tomorrow and starting to make our drive. We have an 18 hour drive from New York down to Louisiana. Make it there in time for practice. We have official practice that is on this Saturday till next Thursday. Six days of practice. That is a lot, a lot of time to fish and break down a body of water. So it's gonna be interesting to see how we break this up. I have some ideas on how I'm gonna break up my practice to try to be efficient because you don't wanna find them the first couple days. I mean, you really don't because by the time tournament comes, Chances are they're gone. Although I will say, I mean, I've never fished Caddo Lake before. There's been a lot of history here. I've never been to Caddo Lake, but there's been a lot of kayak tournament fishing history happened at Caddo Lake. There's some previous winners that have been there. Our buddy Greg Blanchard has almost won there at a KBF National Championship. And uh, it is a lake unlike anything I've ever fished. I think the closest I've come to fishing something like this is honestly probably Toledo Bend and one small creek that had a couple cypress trees. And that's, that's really the closest I come to, where this whole lake is basically a cypress field. I've never fished anything like it. So part of me is like, I wanna skip a couple days of practice going fresh, but the other part of me is like, I've never fished a body of water like this. I'm gonna take the, all the practice I can get to try and figure it out. So that's really what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna bring you guys along. First, this first episode, we're gonna break it up in a few different pieces here. And this might honestly even change by the time the tournament's over. I might even change my mind. We're going to take this episode and it's going to be a travel vlog and a little bit of fishing. We're going to go fun fish on Friday. If we get down in time, we're going to go take the kayak out on a local lake because we cannot be on Caddo until Saturday. We're going to take it on a, little, a local lake and go have some fun and we'll bring you guys along for that in this episode. So there's going to be fishing, I promise. But then part two will be our practice videos. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with six days of footage. It's going to be interesting so we break it up. I don't know. I don't expect too much footage in the first couple of days because my plan is to try and go be kind of weird, kind of off the wall, go try some things that set up for me. I've heard uh, rumors through forum, uh, on reading online that there might be shell bars. Uh, I heard they kind of can silt over fast. So you know me, you guys know I like to graph, I like to be offshore, but I'm not afraid to get up in that skinny stuff, turn the graphs off or leave them in the truck and go hammer on them with some power fishing. But I like to fish offshore and the way this place is set up with only 50 people, if I could find something offshore, I think that's gonna be, that could be a nugget that could be an advantage over the rest of the field. There's there's points in this, yes. But for this tournament, I'm sitting 10th in the Angler of the Year standings. There's no points here. Like there, there's obviously points involved, yes. For me, there's no points. For me here, this is win or bust. Like it's going for that 45 grand for first place. It's a hundred grand total payout. I think it's like 20 something odd grand for second place. So that's the goal. It's win or bust here. So any sort of advantage that I can put in my corner, I think is gonna be pretty good. And I think finding something offshore could be that edge, depending on the size of fish that are there. But episode three of this series will be tournament day number one, episode four, tournament day number two, it's a three day tournament. So then episode five will be the third day, third and final day of the event. So that's how I plan to break it up. Hope you guys will enjoy it, but we're gonna, we're gonna be setting our mind, getting the truck headed south and in search of not a trophy like it, but a similar trophy that we won this past year. We're going to chase some hardware. So we have the truck loaded up. I'll take you guys on a quick tour before, uh, or actually this is the night before and I'm going to a Penguin Sabres game with my fiance and my brother. We're not leaving just yet. We got, we're gonna leave bright and early tomorrow. Let's get the truck loaded up. So we got Hobie in the back. We got our cooler, double straps. You guys seen, we said we got a torque we got a motor on that can make a difference for practice for us. We'll take you through the truck here. 
back seat is a crapshoot. It's, I swear I tried to be organized besides obviously my bibs just hanging here. We have our extra clothes and a dry bag and everything back here, our ring gear down below. You can see I have the seats lifted up because of that. We got our PFDs sneaking in the back here. But all our clothes, we have our two graphs back here, our pedals. We're actually getting a backup pedal drive that my brother is bringing to me just in case. Again, my ring gear that I'm shoving lazily down here. Camera mount, Torquedo, Mega Live, a couple extra tackle boxes, black pack full of tackle boxes, OBH crate full of tackle boxes, actually overflowing the tackle box. So this is all basically tackle here in the back. Got my board sneakily hid back there. Some spare parts for the Hobie here in the back seat. My uh, winter gloves and also summer gloves. It's going to be kind of a mix of weather, uh, extra line. And we actually do have our bundle of whole bag of line that's like under everything down here. I, I said it was somewhat organized. I didn't say it was chaos, but I also didn't say it was great. And in the back here, the side doors, we got some camera parts, tools, sharpies, extra wiring, backup wiring, headlamp, paper towels, uh, floodlights, extra spare things for ratchet straps down for the back of the truck, sunscreen, electric tape, tire gauge, all this spare parts, the kind of oh crap things that I might need. Nothing too exciting up front here, but uh, basically some hats, <laughs> some random fishing stuff. Uh, we got all of our Lake Master chips. You see, I kind of have this organized to an extent. You can see I got basically ibuprofen and vitamin C stuff, chapstick. We got our buffs, extra tethers, camera mounts, extra battery packs, wipes. We got a bunch of spare stuff, things to tune the, our pedals. And this door. <laughs> it's literally just rods. <laughs> rods on rods on rods on rods. And this, we're going to put like our camera gear, computer, all that stuff in the front seat. We got our X2 50 amp battery that powers our graphs up front. We got our shampoo and everything for on the road. And everyone know we want to stop for a shower. Our cleaning supplies. We got our glass cleaner for our graphs. Just regular cleaner for the truck. Keep things, you know, you got to take care of the truck. And then last but not least, kind of a mess back here. You can kind of get the gist, but Torquedo battery. We got our portable battery. Oh, I have two portable batteries. My other one's actually inside charging. Uh, baits, baits, and um, this whole thing is all baits. <laughs> you guys know me. My mantra is always bringing way too much stuff. You never know if you're gonna need power worms to robo worms to swim baits to red flukes to. I mean, the whole 9 yard speed worms to. You guys kind of get the gist here. D, D, D bombs, you know, the whole shebang is basically in here. Uh, you can see all my bundles of line, like I told you back there, torpedo stuff, all of my chargers, toolkits, emergency macaroni and cheese, lunchbox, extension cords. I actually sneak a whole bunch of tools and everything down in here. Um, kind of just kind of like you guys seen, just making sure I'm prepared for everything. All of my spare hats, got to keep the partners happy. Got my Visipole back here. More tools, some spare pliers and stuff that I keep in the back seat. More battery packs, spare tourney tags. Um, some more spare tethers for my board. Flashlight, floodlight, extra backup tags just in case. And then uh, a tool that honestly Actually, I have for my bow for hunting, but duels as my uh, adjustment for my Hobie drive. This little multi-tool that can uh, fix my universal deal on the 360. For my Hobie people, you guys know what I'm talking about. That's basically it. There's nothing crazy, but it basically we're prepared and ready to go for tomorrow. Just got to throw a couple last minute things in here. Don't even actually have my clothes packed right now, and I'm realizing this. I need to go pack my clothes. But it's gonna be a long trek, 18 hours on the road to Louisiana. We're gonna sleep in the truck tomorrow night. Uh, we're not gonna do it in one shot. We're gonna sleep in the truck and uh, hopefully try to get as much done tomorrow as we can to make for some more fishing time come Friday. 
So stay tuned guys, uh, I am about to go enjoy dinner with uh, my fiance because I'm not about to see her for another week and a half basically. And then we're headed to a Penguin Sabres game. For you guys, it'll be in a few seconds, but for me, bright and early tomorrow morning, we're getting in this truck and pointing south and headed to the Hobie TOC. Stay tuned guys. First stop of the day. First stop of the day. I get a little energy drink. It is cold. It's 43 degrees right now. I'm in a shirt. Woo. That'll wake you up. We are an hour into our drive and uh, we have first stop of the day. Needed to get some caffeine. Now we are back on the road. We'll talk to you guys when it gets a little light here. Well, stop number two, getting gas for the first time. We're about almost four hours down the road here, making some good time. Uh, we're gonna try to, the goal is to get to probably like Memphis tonight, which Memphis will put us about five or so hours away from Shreveport. And I'd like to get there somewhere like so a restaurant or a bar or something tonight to chill, get some food and uh, watch the Eagles game tonight. That would be cool. That's the goal anyway kind of doing some brainstorming on uh, game plan when we finally get down to Louisiana to try and fish tomorrow. I'm trying to figure out lake and everything we're gonna go to. But for now, we are pumping gas. It's probably gonna be our first of like four or four stops or something like that in terms of gas. I don't know. We're gonna get back on the road. If there's anything you guys wanna see travel vlog wise, please comment down below for future for 2023 chasing hardware. Be good to know if you guys like this travel stuff and uh, if I should keep filming it in the future and what kind of aspects you'd like to see. So let me know. And make sure y'all like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. All right, we just got stopped. We got a little rest area action to uh, take about 20 minutes here to pack. I packed a sub last night to eat for lunch. That way I wouldn't have to uh, resort to getting like fast food or anything. That's one thing I'm really trying to get better at. The more and more I'm traveling is, I mean, folks know on the road, especially if people are tournament anglers and such, it is hard to stay healthy on the road just because you don't have as many resources to eat healthy. So my fix temporary for that is to stop going to fast food and such while I'm on the road. Put forth a better effort at packing food, packing lunches, dinners, whatever, snacks that are a little bit more on the healthier side that way. Cause it, re it really is true when people say like the better you eat, the more active you are, the better you'll feel. And that's so true, especially when traveling. I mean, traveling, it takes a, believe it or not, you might be sitting there for a while, but it takes a toll on your body. So especially for me driving down 19 hours, I'm, I'm fairly positive besides maybe a two or three people that I might have the longest drive. I know there's a, one guy in Canada and there's a guy in California. There might be one more. I would say I'm in that, that top 5% for longest drives and they take a toll on your body. But well, thankfully we have literally six days of practice to kind of adjust, um, making sure I'm stretching and all that stuff because it might sound cheesy, but it seriously makes a big difference in your week. And when it comes to tournament day, you want that mental freshness at an all time high. You want the body ready to go. You do not want to be any sort of fatigued when it comes to tournament day, especially when we have a hundred grand total payout on the line. I mean, 45K for first, things like 20 something for second, like we mentioned earlier in this video. I'm trying to take time here to be healthy, get back on this grind. It's one thing, not just fishing wise, but trying to get back into being healthy. I kind of fallen off a slope a little bit after getting out of college. I was an athlete my whole life, super healthy, just really trying to be, you know, and I kind of got out of that. because I was like, it's almost like kind of being released from something where you're like, hey, I don't have anything I have to confine to now. Let's go kind of wild with food and stuff. Trying to get back on that healthy, healthy streak. But we're sitting here, uh, we're gonna get crack open. 
uh, another water. I just got a bunch of it out of the cooler in the back and uh, watching a little bit of Greg Blanchard's video uh, to kind of just restart the, the mental deal because we got another like basically six, seven hours we're gonna go. We got 11 hours left total. I have this set on to, to get to Shreveport. So I have 11 hours left to get to where we're staying. Um, so I wanna do like six or seven more hours if I can for today. It's only one o'clock, so I think that's definitely attainable. But we're not gonna be able to get there just sitting here talking to you guys. So I'm gonna shut up, we'll get back on the road. We'll talk to you guys in a little bit. All right, gas stop number two. This is one of the many reasons why I love going south is that right there which honestly is high in my opinion for the south at least from what i've, exp I've experienced but if you come from new york that's that's pretty low we'll take it Definitely worth stopping. Well, that was worth it. That was worth stopping. Kind of nice to stop, stretch the legs. We got four more hours. I think I'm gonna try to stop at a hotel. If not, we'll just sleep in the hotel parking lot. But grabbing some waters out of the cooler, and then gonna go try to finish our drive. That'll leave us with like an hour left to do in the morning to go find a local lake that we'll just go have some fun on. So we can't get on the water again until Saturday. We're not allowed to get on the, on the lake until then. So we're gonna go find a local lake and have some fun tomorrow. I'd say today was a success. We drove a lot more than we had originally anticipated, uh, which is good though, because we have like an hour and a half, two hours to a lake that is close to our tournament lake. Tournament lake is on Caddo, but we're gonna go fish some one of the local lakes. I have no idea which one it's gonna be, nor do I think I can pronounce it, but we're gonna go fish it. Uh, we're gonna go take the morning to go fish. We can't check into the Airbnb just yet. So, so we're going to go fun fish for a little while. So you guys are going to see some fish in here in the morning, but this week is going to be freaking fun. We're going to go fun fish tomorrow and practice starts bright and early for us on Saturday, which we're going to be staying in a house with a couple of folks. So I will try to make my rounds and uh, include them in the next video, the practice video, who, as you can tell, is sleep deprived. So I am signing out and I'll see you guys in three, two, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is 6.15. We got about six hours of sleep. I definitely want to sleep like another six hours. We got six hours of sleep in and we are headed to go fishing. We have two hours left. Two hours left of our journey before we go check into our Airbnb later today. So we're going fishing. We're going to the ramp. You guys are going to see some fishing in today's episode. Can't check in I think until like three o'clock or so. So we are going to go to the ramp, get on the water. Go try to catch some bass. We're gonna be fishing a lake that's pretty similar to Caddo. So kind of just gonna go in blind, obviously, and just screw around, bring a couple rods, don't bring anything crazy, and see what we can find. We're out of the ramp. So we'll see you guys at the lake in three, two. Finally a ramp that's got some water on it. Everything's been so low. Look at that right there. We're gonna get the yak out. Get it loaded up real fast. Go get a couple hours in. Go fishing right there. See if we can't catch our first Louisiana bass for this week. Let's get this baby all rigged up. All right. We're all rigged up. Super simple. It's probably honestly what practice for the first couple days is going to look like. Just super simple. Couple rods, cameras, and then we'll have the torpedo on the back. We don't have the torpedo on the back right now, but uh, just because we're going to be out for a few hours. It's supposed to thunderstorm, I think. So we're just gonna play it safe. We don't need to spare the battery right now. So just a couple baits, go have some fun. Be simple, frog, flip, buzz bait, all that jazz. And uh, yeah, just gonna go have some fun for a couple hours. Hopefully catch some fish, show you guys some fish clips, catch our first bass for the week. 
there's only one other truck here. I haven't seen anyone out in the water here. So it's maybe these fish aren't pressured. So it's fall. Hopefully run into some fish. Stay tuned. Let's go get on the water. I rarely ever use the paddle, but we're gonna have to use the paddle to get out of here. All right. No graphs, four rods, Let's see how deep it is, it's like three foot deep, so uh, first cast in Louisiana, let's go try to catch a bass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I like that. That was awesome. That was awesome. Sweet. See you later. Literally watched them start blowing up on stuff back there. Pretty sure I got it. I hope I got it on the back GoPro. At least the sound. Man, that was sick. Just slowly working this frog like in the middle of nowhere. Like I'm mean, obviously in cypress trees, but it wasn't like it was anything crazy. It's like in the middle of the stuff. It wasn't tight to anything. That's fun. Thank you, sir. That is fun. Guys, I'm literally seeing the bass. Like, I just watched one right in front of me that was like a four pounder. As I pull away from that one, getting too distracting. <laughs> of course I pull away from that fish. <laughs> As I'm looking at another one, the other one blows up on it. What the? How the heck did that just... That was embarrassing. That was bad. That was a big one. And I screwed that up bad. <laughs> oh. Oh, dang. 
thing. I don't know if that fish was blowing up super late on the frog or was just actually eating a bluegill, but watched him blow up over here. Turn around, fire to cast. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. It was probably like, I don't know, two pounder maybe. It was nothing crazy. are mean. Oh my god. They're loaded right here, dude. It's insane, dude. That was a big fish. Alright, so we got a few hours of fishing in. But it is time to get off because one, thunderstorms are coming in. Two, I gotta hop on a phone call here in a little bit. We gotta go get food. We gotta go to the Airbnb, get settled in. We have a long, long nine days ahead of us with six days of practice and then three days of tournament competition. So as fun as it is, we gotta go uh, make sure we're ready for the coming days. So we're gonna get off here, throw the kayak back on the truck and then uh, Head towards the Airbnb and see if we can't find a Walmart, grocery store, something like that. Start picking up some food, get things in order, and get ready for day one of practice tomorrow. So I realized I actually never gave you guys a walkthrough or a recap. Our drive down here and kind of like a walkthrough of the house. But here's the house. My buddy Nolan Miner. I'll drop his YouTube channel down below so you guys can uh, check out his videos. He won the Susquehanna River event for Hobie. Highly encourage you guys to subscribe to Nolan, but let's go take you through a walk through the house and then that's gonna be the end of the first episode, Chasing Hardware from TOC. So we walk in, we got kitchen here in the right. Obviously pretty barren because it's just me. Nolan hasn't really gotten his stuff in yet. Nothing too crazy in the fridge to show you. Basically just waters, energy drinks, and stuff for sandwiches. Pretty status quo for anglers. And to the left we got bedroom number one. Not that you can see anything. We got my bed for the week. Bed two with a cool view. This is the coolest view. We'll get it in a second. Bed number three. It's an interesting couch deal. But the best part is this little walkout deal where we can go and spy on Nolan fishing. Yeah, so nothing crazy, but nice place to stay in, especially when you got some buddies that you could stay with, so. Drew will be getting here tomorrow, but you guys won't see Drew until practice video. Hope you guys enjoy the travel vlog. We got out, we caught some bass for you, so it's not all just me talking and driving. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. The TOC is here, it is this week. I'm excited, I'm psyched. We're hopefully gonna make the most of it. We're gonna put our head down and work our butt off to see how we can make out for this thing. Top 50 best kayak anglers in the world. See how we can do this week. Time to uh, time to go to work. <laughs>